Number 9. Alexander Krylov Alexander Krylov was a Russian career politician who served as a member of the Yakutia State Assembly. But in late 2019, he made headlines for reasons other than politics when he died during a hunting excursion in Siberia's Omiyakon district. A bear dashed out into the road while Krylov was riding an ATV, so he pulled out his gun and shot it dead. He stopped the vehicle and went to examine the creature's body up close, at which point another bear emerged from the nearby woods and attacked Krylov. Within seconds, he was dead. Some call it karma when hunters become the hunted, while others chalk it up to the bad luck or the unfortunate risk that comes along with the sport. On the other hand, the hunting community tends to remember its fallen members in a legendary way, as dedicated sportsmen who lost their lives doing what they truly love. Number 8. Man vs. Mama Bear While out boar hunting in southwestern France recently, a senior citizen came face to face with an angry mother bear. The protective parent was out and about with her cubs when she bit the 70-year-old several times, seriously injuring his legs and damaging some of his arteries. Using the rifle, the man shot the bear twice, killing her instantly. Fellow hunters heard her calls for help and rushed to the scene, where they managed to slow the bleeding until help arrived. The hunter was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The incident highlighted long-held concerns surrounding the decisions to reintroduce brown bears to Pyrenees Mountains after numbers plummeted during the 1990s. Local farmers opposed the move, arguing that bears threatened their livestock but officials went ahead with the plan. The decision hasn't been accepted with open arms and has even sparked protests among those who think it was a bad move. Describing the coexistence of humans and bears as complicated, a local council official told press agency AFP that attacks like this are what we feared when the animals were reintroduced to the area. On the other hand, animal rights activists caution against blaming the bears, pointing out that people are invading their territory not the other way around. It's a complicated issue seen in many parts of the world as human populations grow, and the solutions to it are anything but cut and dry. Number 7. Captured on Camera A man in Essex County, England, recently killed a fox with a pitchfork after prying the animal out of his dog's mouth. The fox bit at the fork in a desperate attempt to save his own life, while the man repeatedly stabbed him with the gardening tool, but the creature eventually stopped moving. The 48-year-old man didn't realize that the whole ordeal was captured on camera, courtesy of the Hunt Saboteurs Association, a nonprofit dedicated to saving wild animals throughout the UK. Disturbing footage shows the suspect torturing the fox to death before nonchalantly picking up the animal's lifeless body and walking away. The organization turned the video over to law enforcement, who arrested the man on suspicion of violating the country's hunting and animal welfare acts. Hunt Saboteurs Association spokesperson Lee Moon described the incident as some of the worst abuse the animal rights organization has ever witnessed. He explained that even though some people believe that England's fox population is out of control, culling should only ever be done humanely and with proper equipment. Moon also pointed out that while most people would understandably be horrified by the footage, the calm and methodical manner in which the man kills the fox shows that his behavior is commonplace. In other words, it speaks volumes that the gruesome act he committed didn't seem to face him. According to activists, incidents like this reveal hidden truths about what really goes on in the hunting world. But many hunting enthusiasts openly condemn animal torture, abuse, and pretty much anything that doesn't constitute a quick, painless kill. And they argue that a man like this is not a welcome member of their community. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Number 6. Safari Disaster Scott Van Ziel was 44 years old when he disappeared in 2017 during a hunting safari with friends in South Africa. His fellow hunters became concerned when his dogs returned to camp without him. They traced Van Ziel's trail to the Limpopo River where they found his backpack near the water. Based on the evidence, they suspected that the worst had happened and that their friend had been killed and possibly eaten by Nile crocodiles. The group obtained permission to shoot and kill three of the reptiles, one of which was found to contain human remains. DNA tests confirmed the following week that the remains belonged to Van Ziel. His death came amid a steady rise in deadly crocodile attacks in the region, which had resulted in four deaths already that year. Nile crocodiles are notorious for their aggressive nature. They also tend to live closer to humans than other crocodilian species, 
which are known for being at least slightly tamer. Their jaws are so powerful that even large animals like wildebeests and buffalo rarely manage to escape their grasp. The species is responsible for as many as 1,000 human deaths every year. In most cases, the creatures either drown their victims or rip them to shreds. Number five, a life-changing ordeal. In 2016, Lee Brooks' life changed forever in a split second while he was out hunting in the mountains of Wyoming. An angry female grizzly bear attacked him seemingly out of nowhere, knocking the man unconscious as he approached an elk he had just killed. The animal was still there when he came to, and she wasn't yet finished with what she had started. Lee scrambled for his knife as the 420-pound beast crushed his body and ripped his face to shreds. He managed to stab the bear a few times, despite not being able to see because his eyes were filled with blood. The animal fled the scene, and Lee spent the next hour desperately screaming for help until his friends found him. He took his nose and upper lip, which were completely ripped off, and stuffed them in his pocket as he awaited rescue by helicopter. There was only one place to take Lee, to a medical school that specialized in reconstructive surgery. Almost every bone in his face was damaged. Doctors put the ailing man in a medically induced coma while they started the painstaking process of rebuilding his face and body. They used pieces of Lee's leg bone to repair his facial structure and made a lip and mustache with his scalp. In a shocking move for the history books, the team attached his severed nose to his arm with plans to eventually sew it back onto his face. Lee stayed in a coma for a month while he underwent dozens of surgeries. The reconstructive work is ongoing. His nose has been reattached to his face, and while it's pretty obvious that he was injured, his improvement has been nothing short of remarkable. Number four, an impromptu wrestling match. When Shauna Hoekstra saw a deer struggling to walk and falling over in a cornfield outside her Alto, Michigan home in 2015, she saw it as an opportunity to harvest some meat to feed her family with. She made her way over to the ailing 10-point buck with a machete in hand, just in case it wasn't dead yet. Much to Shauna's surprise, the deer lunged at her as she approached. She grabbed its antlers, wrestled the animal to the ground, and got on top of him in what she described to MLive.com as one solid move. But she was afraid to get off the deer because it would give him another opportunity to attack her. The pair remained interlocked for a good 30 to 40 minutes as they struggled against one another. Finally, Shauna's father arrived at the scene. He knew that she had gone outside to collect the deer for its meat and became worried when she was gone for a long time. The concerned dad called 911 while Shauna continued to hold the buck to the ground. Once police arrived, they put the animal down. Shauna wasn't hurt, but she was definitely shaken from the ordeal. I mean, who wouldn't be? But she calmed down and her breathing returned to normal, so she declined medical treatment. And she was able to keep the deer for its meat, meaning her mission was accomplished, even if it took a bit longer than expected to get it done. Number three, a trophy hunting tragedy. An American trophy hunter made international headlines last year for allegedly killing a male lion who headed two prides in Zimbabwe's Uwange National Park. The 12-year-old big cat named Mopane repeatedly suffered for an entire day before he succumbed to his injuries. The hunter allegedly stalked the lion with the help of the same safari operator that sparked outrage against the world in 2015 for helping another American track and kill an iconic lion named Cecil. Mopane is said to have died near the same spot where Cecil was shot to death. Both of the killings triggered widespread anger amongst activists as the population at large increasingly disapproves of trophy hunting. More and more people seem to be condemning the practice as cruel and reflective of humanity at its worst. And when you think about how it works, it makes sense. Trophy hunters spend thousands of dollars to have a guide help them find and kill majestic animals that are often endangered. The person who killed Mopane reportedly lured the lion out of the park and into a game preserve, then shot him with an arrow. Mopane's death came the year after another male lion that he presided over a pride with was killed by a trophy hunter. The pride was left without a leader, leaving female lions and their cubs vulnerable to aggressive animals who are known to sometimes kill members during the takeover process. Sadly, trophy hunting is not a crime in Zimbabwe, so the hunters who killed Mopane, Cecil, and others did not get in any legal trouble for their actions. But the court of public opinion certainly made its own judgment, 
dragging the killers into the spotlight in a rather undesirable way and reminding the trophy hunting community that the world is watching. Number two, a moody moose. British Columbia resident Bernie Berenger and his friend Joe were on their way home from a hunting day trip in 2013 when a mother moose and her calves caught their attention. The men spent several minutes following the family before they decided to continue toward home where their dinner was waiting. But the mother moose apparently didn't like their forwardness and she wasn't about to let the situation end peacefully. Video footage of the incident shows the displeased mama standing her ground as one of the hunters says, we just want to get by lady. The hair on the back of her neck and shoulders stood up and she charged at Bernie and Joe. They managed to narrowly avoid ending up in her path as she charged at them three more times. At one point, the angry moose hit her head on the bumper of the pair's truck. She ran at the vehicle one more time, smacking her chest and shoulder against it. The moose finally gave up and went away, leaving the two men unharmed. And they were only a half an hour late to dinner. Moose are not aggressive by nature, but like any animal, they can become violent when they feel provoked or threatened. And this seems to happen quite often. For example, in Alaska, more people are injured by moose every year than by bears. The creatures are more likely to attack during mating season or when they have offspring to protect, which explains why this mother moose made it clear to Bernie and Joe that they were overstepping into her comfort zone. Even when a moose charges at a human, they're usually bluffing. In other words, it's a warning to the people to get away and give them some space before it gets ugly. These two hunters were lucky to walk away unscathed. And number one, a curious bite. 25-year-old deer hunter Dalton Roach was sitting in his deer stand recently in western Wisconsin when a curious black bear began climbing toward him. At first, the 300-pound creature wasn't acting out of the ordinary. In fact, it's not totally uncommon for a bear to go into a tree with a hunter, according to Roach, who spoke with ABC7 Chicago. But things took a strange turn when the animal decided to bite him in the back. Roach was wounded, but he knew better than to panic. He captured the nerve-wracking ordeal on camera. In hopes of scaring the bear away, he turned toward the creature and began shouting, telling it that it needed to leave. The bear hung around for another half hour before finally getting bored enough to wander elsewhere. Roach then made the quarter mile back to his truck while talking to a friend on the phone about what had just happened. He told ABC7 Chicago, in his own words, that he was honestly kind of laughing about it because it's one of the situations that obviously didn't happen every day. The perplexed hunter erred on the safe side and went to the emergency room for a rabies vaccine, where he later said was more painful than the actual bite. A spokesperson for the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources said that bears tend to be skittish, so it helps to make a lot of noise while backing away in the event that someone crosses paths with one. The agency further explained that at that particular time of year, bears tend to be searching for food before they hibernate, and it reassured the public that attacks are rare. Since 2013, only four people have been hurt by bears in the state, and nobody has been killed. Number 10, Jay Bowskill. Angel Lynn was only 19 years old. She had her whole life ahead of her when her boyfriend, Jay Bozkill, decided to kidnap her in late 2020 after the pair got into an argument. Surveillance footage captured the disturbing moment he wrapped her up in a bear hug and forced her into a van. She fell out of the vehicle a short while later as it traveled at 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour. Angel was found lying face down on a roadside in Leicestershire, England. She suffered from severe brain injuries and a cracked skull and was left unable to communicate. The young woman now requires 24-7 care and doctors aren't sure if she'll ever recover. 20-year-old Bozkill and his alleged co-conspirator Rocco Sampson denied ever kidnapping Angel, despite the whole being caught on camera. They were both found guilty and Bozkill was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison while Sansom received a 21-month sentence. Angel's mother is challenging the sentences in court in hopes of increasing the amount of time both men will spend behind bars. Number 9. Nashan Walsh 
Life was abruptly cut short for 37-year-old single mother of two, Bianna James. Bianna was found dead with her throat cut and a knife on her chest at a housing project in the Bronx. Police suspected her boyfriend, 35-year-old Nashan Walsh, and charged him with murder, manslaughter, and criminal possession of a weapon. The couple shared the apartment where officers found Bianna unconscious and unresponsive. Just days earlier, she had sent some of her family members a text message saying that she feared for her life. She texted her sister, I'm scared he's going to kill me. She also reportedly said that Walsh was behaving strangely and screaming that someone had laced his marijuana. The last text she sent was to her cousin saying, he's here, he's back. Her loved ones grew increasingly concerned when they didn't hear from her after that, especially since she normally replied to her messages pretty quickly. Walsh has an extensive criminal history, with 11 prior unsealed arrests dating back to 1995. It is unclear whether Bianna was involved of any of the previous incidents. Number 8. Keeping it in the family In early 2020, a young woman named Ashley began to suspect that her 22-year-old boyfriend, Zach, had a wandering eye not just for other women, but for her own mother. She reached out to the YouTube show to catch a cheetah for help getting to the bottom of the matter, and her mom agreed to participate in the sting, which was all captured on camera. Ashley's mom crossed paths with Zach at a park near the NYU campus where he attended college classes. She flirted with the man, suggesting that they should work out together. Zach eagerly took the bait, prompting the woman to further test him by blurting out that they should just sleep together. He instantly replied that he didn't think Ashley would like that idea, but he also made no effort to distance himself from the woman, who persisted in her advances. Ashley's mom reassured Zach that her daughter would never find out, and said that the experience would actually benefit Ashley because she could teach him some things and he replied by saying, I don't see why not. The two exchanged numbers, and before parting ways, Zach playfully slapped his girlfriend's mother's rear end. Many viewers suspected that the interaction was staged, but others pointed out that Ashley seemed truly horrified by what was going on as she watched the situation unfold. Either way, it's probably safe to say that she and Zach are no longer an item. Number seven, too close for comfort? Earlier this year, a TikToker named Sophie posted a video that showed her boyfriend approaching her best friend at a party to dance. The pair can be seen talking and dancing briefly before turning toward the camera. Sophie revealed that someone else had filmed the video and sent it to her, and she was concerned that the pair had gotten a little too close for comfort. She wanted opinion from her followers about whether or not the impromptu get down was appropriate. The video racked up 5 million views in less than a week, and people were quick to throw in their two cents. Many felt that the interaction was innocent and threw up no red flags whatsoever, especially since Sophie's beau and her BFF both seemed unfazed when they realized that they were being recorded. Others accused the person who filmed the video of being the most problematic factor because it seemed like they may have sent Sophie the video with the intention of starting drama. Some commenters encouraged her to be cautious, even if the footage seemed harmless for the most part. Number 6. Juan Barron In one of the most bizarre criminal cases to make US news headlines so far this year, the body of 73-year-old Hawaii resident Gary Ruby was recently found dead and encased in cement inside his upscale Honolulu home. Ruby's brother had asked police to do a welfare check after not hearing from the man since early February. He informed them that Gary had recently started seeing a much younger man named Juan Barron. The 23-year-old answered the door and allowed officers to come in and look around after reportedly claiming that he bought the home from Ruby five years earlier. Police saw no outward signs of Ruby, but noticed that the bathtub was filled with a concrete-like substance. Later that day, they observed Baron leaving the home with another one of Ruby's alleged lovers, 34-year-old Scott Hannon. What started out as a non-criminal search for a missing person took a disturbing turn the next day after police discovered that Baron and Hannon had left Hawaii together. They took a second look around the home and were met with the overwhelming odor of coffee when they entered the bathroom. 
After chipping away at the concrete-like mixture in the bathtub, they found Ruby's decomposing corpse. Someone had tried to conceal the senior citizen's body by covering it with coffee grounds and cement. Law enforcement captured the fleeing fugitives in California and held them in custody while awaiting their extradition to Hawaii. Barron allegedly admitted to choking Ruby to death and attempting to stage the scene as a suicide before entombing his older lover's remains in cement. He attacked the victim in a fit of rage after learning that Gary was HIV positive. When Barron noticed his boyfriend choking on some food, he took the opportunity to wrap a belt around his neck and strangle him to death. The suspect faces a slew of charges for his alleged role in Ruby's death, including second-degree murder, theft, and identity theft. Scott Hannon was released from custody after being cleared of any suspicion in the case. Number 5. Brennan Murphy 24-year-old Kaylin Johnson was six months pregnant with her second child when she and her two-year-old son, Caden, vanished in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, earlier this year. The woman's family called on police to do a welfare check after not hearing from her for almost a week. They found no signs of foul play at her apartment, but opened an investigation into the disappearance. In the meantime, Johnson's loved ones continued trying to reach her, but her cell phone was turned off. Officers learned that she was in a relationship with a 20-year-old man named Brennan Murphy and brought him in for questioning. He initially denied having any knowledge of Kaylin and her son's whereabouts, but his behavior indicated foul play to investigators who found the missing woman's car with the license plates removed. Murphy further raised suspicion when he disappeared himself, but the law quickly caught up with him. He reportedly confessed to killing Kaylin and Caden and gave detectives information that led to the discovery of their remains in a wooded area. Investigators believe that the pair could have been dead for at least a week before their bodies were discovered. Kaylin was shot to death and Caden may have died from hypothermia, although the cause of the toddler's death is still being investigated. Murphy faces two counts of murder and one count of feticide for his alleged role in the senseless tragedy. Number 4. Andrew Sorensen After hearing that his daughter was allegedly forced into a sex trafficking ring in 2020, a 60-year-old Washington state resident named John Eisenman rescued her from Seattle and returned her to safety in the city of Spokane. Believing that her boyfriend, 19-year-old Andrew Sorensen, was responsible for his daughter's suffering, Eisenman tracked the man down and waited for the perfect moment to exact his revenge. He tied Sorensen up and forced him into the trunk of his car before bludgeoning him with a cinder block and stabbing him to death. The suspect then drove to a remote site and abandoned the car with the young man's remains inside. At some point, someone moved the vehicle to Spokane and left it parked in the city. After noticing that it had been sitting in the same place for a while, a group of people decided to go through it and found Sorensen's body. Eisenman's claims that the man had trafficked his daughter quickly garnered widespread sympathy from supporters who donated to online crowdfunding campaigns to pay his legal fees. But investigators found no evidence that Sorensen had forced the young woman into the sex trade. Court documents revealed that Eisenman's daughter had gone to a hospital in Seattle and claimed that she was trafficked, but her story conflicted with the evidence. It also came to light that Eisenman allegedly admitted to being a heavy methamphetamine user when he killed Sorensen. His family continues to campaign for his innocence as he faces a first-degree murder charge. Number 3. Xavier Johnson 27-year-old single mother Andrea Lloyd was working as a caretaker at a group home in southwest Miami-Dade County late last year when a man showed up in the middle of the night and began beating her in a sickening attack that was captured on camera. He dragged the young woman, who was pregnant with her third child, out of the house and forced her into her own car before taking off to an unknown destination. Lloyd's godmother, Alfreda Lyons, told local station WSVN that she believed Andrea knew her attacker because she wouldn't have opened a door for a stranger at that time of night. The family's suspicions grew when Lloyd's boyfriend, Xavier Johnson, contacted them 15 minutes before she was scheduled to finish her shift and said that she was missing. They publicly pleaded with the suspected attacker to do the right thing and tell them where she was. 
But Johnson didn't come forward on his own. Instead, Lloyd's loved ones ended up tracking him down and holding him in place until the police arrived. Officers found Lloyd's remains nearby and charged Johnson with first-degree murder, kidnapping, and burglary. The suspect allegedly confessed to killing his girlfriend and faces the death penalty if convicted. Lloyd's father, Arnold, told CBS Miami that his daughter was planning to leave Johnson because she suspected him of cheating, unaware that it would end up costing her her life. Number 2. Caught Red-Handed A young Australian woman named Jamie recently got a gut feeling that her boyfriend was cheating on her. Unable to sleep and plagued by an unbearable, nagging suspicion, she felt she had no other choice than to go to his home and see what he was up to. Jamie's instincts proved correct when she walked into her partner's home at four in the morning and discovered him in bed with another woman. She snapped a photo for evidence, grabbed her belongings, and shouted a few choice words or the pair broke up and Jamie never spoke to the man again. She shared her experience on social media and encouraged others to follow their gut feelings when it comes to whether or not their partner is being loyal. Around the same time, a TikToker named Ashley Shane told her followers about how her boyfriend of 15 months was living a complete double life. He had another girlfriend, and neither she nor Ashley knew about each other until the observant other woman noticed a photo of the couple in one of her videos. The two ladies got to talking and realized that they had both been fooled into thinking that they were in a monogamous relationship with the man for quite some time. After realizing that neither of them were at fault, the women stayed on friendly terms and kicked the two-timing man to the curb. Number 1. Matthew Rondeau Shanna Mokler is best known as a former beauty queen and the mother of Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker's children. Things didn't work out between the couple, and in 2020, she began an intense on-and-off relationship with a professional model named Matthew Rondeau. Things between the pair appear to have been contentious from the get-go. The romance reached an apparent breaking point in late February when Rondo accused Shanna of cheating. Things allegedly got physical and the cops were called to the scene, where they slapped Rondo with a felony domestic violence charge. Shortly after the incident, he aired the couple's personal business in a disturbing social media video in which he accused Shanna of cheating and said that the relationship was over. Rondo said that he planned to never speak to Mokler again and posted the alarming rant on her Instagram page. It seems as though the couple's problems peaked after Rondo joined the reality show Celebrity Big Brother and accused Shanna of flirting with fellow contestant Lamar Odom. Whether or not there's any truth to the allegations is a matter of his word versus hers. Ten. One terrified grandmother. In Texas, a 90-year-old grandmother was caught on video desperately trying to protect her 21-year-old grandson from being arrested by a group of police officers. The bizarre incident happened in 2020. Footage shows the exact moment Ty Anders laid down on his front lawn as three Midland police officers pointed their firearms at him, and all because he failed to yield at a stop sign on a Saturday afternoon. The young man was clearly terrified. He was yelling at the police to please put their guns down, crying that he was scared, and yeah, you can't really blame him. He clearly wasn't armed, he was lying on the ground, and yet three police needed to put their guns in his face. In the middle of it all, his grandmother strolled up in a pink dress with her walking stick to try and get between the cops and her grandson. Ty was arrested and taken to jail, then later released on bond. The reason the cops had treated them so harshly was that he blew through a stop sign and then refused to pull over until he got to his grandmother's house. Officers say they pulled their guns out when he exited the vehicle and refused to cooperate. 9. Nashville Shootout A video from a Nashville police officer's dashboard camera caught the terrifying confrontation between himself and a woman as they opened fire on one another during a traffic stop gone wrong. Officer Josh Baker pulled over a woman named Nika Nicole Holborn at around 9.30 in the morning in March of 2021. She was driving a Chevrolet Camaro, a vehicle Josh recognized as belonging to a convicted drug dealer wanted on six warrants. The officer interrogated Nika, and through the interrogation, she became uncooperative and hostile. He discovered drugs in her purse, 
and that was when he decided to put her in handcuffs. But, as he attempted to get the handcuffs on her, things got violent. She didn't want to be arrested. She kept screaming that she hadn't done anything, and so the officer tased her. When he tried to get her into the handcuffs a second time, she pulled out a gun and fired. The officer was hit. He fired back, and Nika got into her car and slammed on the gas. She crashed her car less than a block away. According to the public affairs manager for the Nashville Metropolitan Police Department, a bullet struck Josh underneath his bulletproof vest. His shot was fatal, and Nika was dead by the time she got to the hospital. To make things even more bizarre, this all happened in the parking lot of a Dollar General. People were behind them just trying to get some good deals while bullets were flying over their heads. 8. A Molotov Cocktail At a traffic stop in April of 2021, a deranged motorist attacked an NYPD officer. It was Saturday morning in Brooklyn when the angry motorist threw a Molotov cocktail at the police officer who'd stopped him. It all started with a simple traffic stop just before 8 o'clock in the morning. One officer approached the driver's side door, and the driver threw what was described as a caustic liquid substance in the face of the cop. Then he drove away. Another officer dragged the vehicle down soon after and pulled up behind it. The man stopped the car and got out, then threw a lit Molotov cocktail at the cop car. But it was a flop. The vodka bottle bounced off the patrol car and shattered in the street with no damage done. The suspect took off again, crashing his own car. He had no way of escape and the police descended on him. Maybe the craziest part is that the guy had been driving around with a cup full of caustic liquid and a Molotov cocktail. Seems like a weird combination to have on hand. The officer who got splashed with the chemical had to be treated for his burns, while the attacker was taken to jail. 7. Cruelty to a Paraplegic On September 30, 2021, police officers stopped a man named Clifford Owensby. According to the Dayton Police Department, the man was pulling away from a suspected drug house. When the cops learned his identity, they became aware of his felony past. He'd previously been charged with crimes related to drugs and weapons. Because of that, the officers wanted to bring a canine unit in to look for drugs inside the vehicle. But before the dogs could sniff around, Clifford had to get out of his car. This is where things got ugly. Clifford informed the officers that he could not technically step out of his car because he's a paraplegic. Clifford wasn't being difficult and said he would be happy to comply and get out if the officers could help him. Instead of being human about the situation, the police became agitated and dragged him out of the car by his arms and hair. Then they put his arms behind his back and dragged his limp body across the street. Obviously, the police were in the wrong here. You can't be dragging paraplegic people around on the pavement. At the same time, they did discover a bag of cash which contained $22,000 in the vehicle. It was discovered by the K-9 unit, which police say means it was somewhere near illegal drugs. That doesn't excuse their behavior by any stretch of the imagination, but it's important to know the whole story. 6. A mix-up and a concussion After a traumatizing traffic stop in 2019, teenager Roger Warner filed a lawsuit against the town of Laurel, Maryland. Roger was allegedly pulled over for speeding as part of an ordinary traffic stop. But that traffic stop ended with Roger in the hospital, with a concussion and his face covered in bruises. He and his mother are now demanding justice for what they say was a mishandling of the situation on the part of the police. Roger claims Officer David Marvel found his license suspended. Roger told the officer that wasn't true and that there'd been a mix-up. The officer told Roger to drive straight home and figure out the issue. But Roger wanted the officer to understand that he wasn't doing anything wrong and that his suspension issue had already been fixed. It was this arguing that apparently riled up the police officer, who escalated things very quickly. Instead of driving to his house, Roger was pulled out of his vehicle, tossed on the ground, and then hit on his head over and over. Two more officers even showed up and held him down on the ground. When Roger's mother arrived at the police station, her son was covered in blood and had suffered a concussion. Now they're hoping to get some justice for a situation that spiraled way out of control. 5. Murder by Association 
Tyler Kennedy was driving 90 miles per hour, 145 kilometers per hour, in his Ford F-150 on March 27, 2021. He crashed his truck into an SUV carrying a family of five. The accident was horrific, resulting in the death of Michael Dermier, his daughter Georgia, and his fiancée Lauren. The only survivors were two young children, although one suffered serious brain trauma and will likely be disabled for the rest of her life. There's really nothing more tragic than half a family being ripped apart by a crazed motorist. But the worst part is that it should have been prevented. Hours earlier, the police had an incident with Tyler because he'd been smoking fentanyl in his vehicle. They discovered drug paraphernalia and pills in his trunk. They also knew Tyler as a criminal with a history of shoplifting, drug abuse, and traffic violations. Nye County deputies were called to the local park where Tyler had allegedly threatened to shoot somebody. Yet despite this guy driving around high on fentanyl and threatening to kill people, the police let him go. One of the deputies was even caught on body cam footage saying that was a huge waste of time. Well, it wouldn't have been a waste of time if Tyler had been arrested. The cops let him go because he was too much of a hassle to deal with, too much paperwork, and their failure to do something resulted in the deaths of three innocent people. 4. A Deadly Ambush Deputies in Florida were ambushed back in August of 2021 by a man described as a violent career criminal. The incident began as a routine traffic stop. Police pulled over a vehicle that had three adults and an infant inside. As the officers were chatting with two of the passengers, they asked the third to get out of the vehicle. Instead, he leaped into the back seat, snatched up a rifle, and opened fire. Officers ran for safety, with one of them taking a bullet in the leg. Things got real very quickly. The officers dug down, but the gunman was already on the move. Luckily for the police, his weapon jammed as he was hunting them down, sneaking behind their own patrol vehicle. He used the butt of his rifle to smash one deputy in the face, and this act of brutalism allowed the deputies to open fire. From start to finish, about 60 seconds elapsed. According to the investigators, that was enough time for 61 shots to be fired. The suspect, later identified as Paris Wilder, was dead at the scene. His rap sheet was enormous, including charges of armed robbery, battery of a law enforcement officer, and even attempted murder. He was out on bond at the time of the ambush and had two active warrants. 3. A series of unfortunate events In December of 2012, a trip to the convenience store ended in tragedy and two people were killed when a routine traffic stop went totally off the rails. Ida Murphy was walking from her home on Northampton Street to the market to get some juice. She was 54 years old. As Ida was walking to the store, she got tangled up in a shootout. Police had pulled over a man they suspected was drinking and driving. There was a confrontation and one of the cops fired his weapon. The drunk driver hit the gas of his SUV and crashed into some light poles. One of those light poles toppled over and fell right onto Ida Murphy's head. Her skull was crushed and she was killed instantly. It was a total fluke that this happened to Ida. She was really at the worst possible spot at the worst possible time. Had she left 30 seconds earlier, she would have been past the light pole and maybe still alive today. It was just one of those unforeseeable freak accidents and it left the community and Ida's family devastated. 2. Capital Murder of a Cop A veteran cop was killed in June of 2021 after he got run over by a pair of suspects fleeing a traffic stop. His name was Kevin Apple, on the force for 23 years. He was making a routine traffic stop in Arkansas when the vehicle he approached rammed into him, then dragged him up the road. It was vehicular manslaughter, every officer's worst nightmare who's ever had to pull somebody over. Apple and another officer named Brian Stamps had been responding to a call about a blue jeep that had just committed property crime. They spotted the vehicle with that description at a convenience store and gas station and used their squad car to box it in. They assumed the jeep was stuck, and so Kevin Apple approached the driver. It was the moment the driver was waiting for. He hit the gas, ran over Kevin, and plowed through his squad car. As the jeep peeled away, Officer Stamps opened fire. As you can imagine, the Arkansas police were not about to let this kind of thing slide. 
they tracked the killers down almost instantly. They soon had Shauna Ray Cash and Elijah Anna Deloza Sr. in custody and charged with capital murder. Elijah was only 18 years old, Shauna only 22. They're both almost definitely going to be in jail for the rest of their life. Not only because they committed capital murder, but because they ran over and killed a cop in an extremely horrific and merciless way. 1. Tragedy in Maryland Norali Paz Chavez died after crashing into a fence post and hitting a tree following a routine traffic stop in Maryland. It happened at 1.30 in the morning on a Saturday, February 26, 2022. Montgomery County Police say an officer saw her car commit a traffic violation and so they tried to pull her over. Instead of complying, Paz Chavez drove away. She tried to outrun the police but only got about 2.5 miles, 4 kilometers. She lost control of her vehicle and crashed and was pronounced dead at the scene. It's tragic that such a young woman, only 26 years old, passed away under such violent circumstances and her family just doesn't understand how it happened. Her mother, Wanda, is devastated by the accident, saying her daughter was her reason for living. Wanda also said in an interview that she just doesn't get why her daughter would drive away rather than pulling over. Even the police don't know exactly why she tried to drive away, but believe she may have been under the influence of alcohol. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have police point their guns at you or be in the car with a drunk driver? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.